USA Today called it an irresistible summer read. Um, I do have to say, though, when I first heard about this book over one of our lunches, was it three years ago? Um, and, you know, this is, we, we live in a modern era with fast paced, you know, stress, technology, Facebook, now texting and Twittering. Uh, and I was stunned when Gary told me the subject of his book. He said it was about bridge. I thought, Gary, what are you thinking? <laughs> Gary, what were you thinking? <laughs> okay, so the idea for this book came to me from Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is a man I've never met. Buffett is an inveterate bridge player, as many of you know, uh, as is Bill Gates. They play together. They play online. Uh, and they play sometimes in tournaments. Well, uh, about three and a half years ago, my literary agent, David Black, had lunch with Buffett in Omaha. And David called me afterwards. He says, I've got a great book idea for you. Now, David is a great literary agent, but a lot of his book ideas are awful. Wow. They're awful. <laughs> so I said, OK, I'm all ears. And I hear him say something about bridge. And I'm thinking, Brooklyn Bridge, <laughs> Golden <laughs> Bridge. He says, no, 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 the card game of bridge. And I'm like the Labrador Retriever. I'm kind of turning my head to the side. You got to go on, right? And so he said, well, Warren said, you know, back in the, in the late 20s and in the 30s, bridge is all the rage. You know, it was uh, young and sexy and everyone was playing. It was, you know, um, on newsreels and hands analyzed on, on radio. And I'm thinking, <laughs> and well, Warren men mentioned something about a bridge table murder. And I thought, murder might be good. <laughs> and there was a trial, and I'm thinking, I like trials. And so I said, all right, all right, give me, give me a chance. Let me, let me look into it. So what happened here, as you know from your work, um, is a best case scenario for nonfiction. The, the story deepens, and it becomes like quicksand. And as I consumed it, it was consuming me. So I just followed my instincts with it. Are you going to convince us that Bridge is uh, hip? <laughs> I mean, Warren Buffett. <laughs> Uh, it's, I, I would, I, up until now, until I read your book, I thought, you know, this is something for, uh, pardon me, the older people, squares, come on. Bridge, bridge is an absorbing game. It is, um, anyone who plays um, has studied it. You have to study it. There's poker and, and then there's bridge, right? And, and bridge is a partnership game, you know? And, and poker is not. Poker, you blame your failure on the fall of the cards. Bridge, you blame your partner, right? Like Jack and Myrtle. And, and, you know, life is meant to be lived in partnership. And, and so you've got to be in sync with your partner. And it does take time. You can learn the basics of poker, right, in about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. But not so with bridge. With bridge, you've, you've got to spend weeks, months, you spend years, and you still will never perfect the game. It is not perfectable. Uh, and, and that's, you know, it's sort of the majesty of the game. Uh, it was, it took off in, in, the, in the late 20s. And, and I mean, it was young and sexy. Everyone played. I mean, back then you had, you know, the, these Hollywood moguls. Uh, Samuel Goldwyn was playing with, with you know, Lewis Mayer in New York. The writers at the Algonquin Round Table, they were all playing. Um, the Marx Brothers were playing and in Independence, Missouri. Uh, Bess Truman was playing every Thursday with the lady, her lady friends. Um, even Babe Ruth was playing bridge. Now, now, he's not known to be an intellectual giant. Right? But the babe is playing on, on uh, trains with sports writers and in hotels, and it caught on. It just it took, it took off. And so the question is, how does that happen? Mm -hmm. You know, the 20s, you think, a huge breakout period, right? Um, it, it's, it's a disaster haunted time because you're coming out of the First World War, and everyone is waiting for that, that next grief to come. And, of course, it does come. Mm -hmm. um, three weeks after Jack <laughs> Bennett fell right about there, uh, the stock market crashed. And, and so um, you had these, these outrageous, outlandish crazes. You know, flagpole sitting, mm -hmm. marathon floating in swimming pools. And then you have this civilized game descended from whist that breaks out. You know, this is the game whist that, that Talleyrand played and Napoleon and, and Thomas Jefferson. So how does it happen? Well, you need a, you know, a galvanizing force, mm -hmm. Dewey Culbertson, uh, and you need these, these flashpoint moments such as what happened uh, on the night of September 29, 1929, in that Kansas City apartment, an apartment I had visited. Wow. And, and um, you know, as, as the people just saw here in performance, 
Myrtle Bennett hired herself a, a one-man legal dream team, Jim Reed. And, and Jim Reed was the most famous man in Kansas City. He was uh, smoking cigars with H.L. Mencken. Uh, he was uh, great friends with Clarence Darrow. He had twice run for president. He was going to run one more time and get steamrolled by FDR. And in this trial, he's waxing on about uh, you know, the sanctity of womanhood, while at the same time carrying on an extramarital affair with the woman next door. He was married, and so was she, to other people. And at the time of the trial, Nell Donnelly, who's a millionaire businesswoman in Kansas City, the next door neighbor of Jim Reed, was carrying Jim Reed's son. Mm -hmm. And um, this is why I never write fiction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and meanwhile, so, so in, in New York, someone's watching. And it's Elie Culbertson. Elie Culbertson is the, is the great Barnum of this bridge craze. And he was you know, spotlessly manicured and in his tuxedo. And he was um, a master salesman. And advertising has taken off. The modern media age has, has begun. You have the beginning of you know, tabloid newspapers with the New York Daily News in 1920 and talkie films and radio. Radio, so now a personality can be you know, created three-dimensionally. And, and Culbertson used it all to his advantage. And what he was doing was selling bridge he was selling his bridge bidding system, the Culbertson system. He was selling uh, the Culbertson blue book of bridge, and he was selling himself. And what he was really doing was selling sex. He was, he was selling the battle of the sexes. A lot of people think that started you know, in 1973 hmm. on a tennis court with, with Billie Jean King and Bobby Reed. But really, it was at least a half century before. Um, at the bridge table, of all places, oftentimes bidding a husband against wife. And so what Culbertson was doing was sort of peeking through, you know, the, the peephole of the bedroom door and, and talking to women. And they loved him. They loved him because, for one thing, he would always talk about his wife, who was a magnificent bridge champion, Josephine Culbertson. She was lovely. Um, and, and he always called her, you know, my favorite partner. And, you know, housewives across, across America then, and I suspect now, love to hear a married man talk about his wife as his favorite partner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a great sales pitch. Mm -hmm. and, and so um, he told women, housewives who were seeking more excitement in their lives, that all you need, if you want equality, you know, they, women had just gotten the right to vote, if you want true equality, all you need is buy yourself a deck of cards and one of my bridge instruction books. Right. You know, and the bridge table is the one place, ladies, where by dint of your intellect, and your skill, you can be your husband's equal or more. And that's where the rub was. 